this childlikeness, it just cannot, for some reason, I don't know, what is it? Well, I do know what it is, but to explain it would, would be a bit much. But there is this way about the child that you can't take anything seriously. You really can't. And the joy is living it. The joy is so powerful and so beautiful. The living of it is extraordinary because it keeps flowing. It's like you're actually in, and I've said this before, but it is, it's true. And all the ancient ones, the, the ancient Tao has said this, but it's as if we're in the river of life, just in the river and it flows and it takes us and you see it every day you wake up into the well even when you're asleep you're in the river you know people do that thing in um when you study the the um non-duality or i don't know how we call it the subjective or uh even even the uh indian um Advaita or however it goes and I don't know anything about all that I do know the subject of non-duality in the sense that I I understand the idea of absolute oneness but even even beyond that you see there's something greater there's something more there cannot be an end to this there isn't just we don't strive for an absolute because there's no, it's a living, it's an ongoing, it's a presence, it's the presence of life itself. And when we start to discover the child, and this is where I was going, when Jeff calls, we often, you know, get on this lovely subject of childlikeness, the child, and, and, and he asked me, is it actually like when we were little kids? and. And he says, it feels like that. And I says, it's very much exactly like that. It's, it's the spirit of that. It's the energy of that. It's the vitality and the joy and the, and the laughter of that. The inquisitiveness, the curiosity, the inventiveness, the, the imagination. The, the beauty is, the beauty is with this discovery, is it, we aren't striving for an infinite void. Even infinity has, a, has an end. It's like it's beyond infinite. It is the living. And so this childlikeness, it's fresh and alive. And, and yes, we understand, and, and it's not something you have to intellectually figure out or carry with you. It's the living motion, the living movement of this presence that's always here, always present, doesn't go anywhere. But the beauty is, when we get to this, and to me it's the third place, it is the third place. It is the point of... Uh, this triangle like, and I've talked about this before and I know it, but it's so essential to understand there is always the third position and it includes subjective and objective. It includes non-duality and duality. It includes it all and yet it's greater than both. And in that, in that place where the child is, we have a freedom. We have a freedom to think and imagine and wonder and and dream and think of the past and think of the future and create and nothing's thrown out. Nothing has to be gotten rid of. Nothing has to be. This is definitely not the annihilation of any part of ourself. And that's what I love. That's what I discovered and that's what I want to share because when we find that, well, then something happens and we begin to understand the reasons the world is the way it is. And in this understanding, 
We don't have to change it. We don't have to fix it. We don't have to be on a great political mission. We don't have to be, we don't have to hang on to an ideology. We don't have to hang on to a, a, a God that's, you know, like, like something. It, it, it's life itself. It is the presence of life itself. And it's, 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 it's extraordinary. And the power of living this joyful presence it really it really is the energy and the light that will change everything else in our world it's it's that beautiful position of knowing that as we live this joy as we live this love as we live this open open-hearted fearlessness our world is affected by it our world is is changed by it so here's my point and i i wandered off and and i maybe anyway here's my point the point is that we do this individually it is an individual discovery and it is through the individual that we do any good for the world if we're going to do good for the world it comes through this freedom this fearlessness this bright happy not serious joy of living in the light of this ever-present love that is holding us, taking us. Yes, there is a beautiful security to this. This isn't out in an infinite nothingness, out in an empty void of, of no thing and all that sort of conceptual idea that is mm, being promoted, I would say, by uh, by certain ideologies that want to speak of oneness this isn't a an empty oneness and we're not going towards an emptiness we're actually finding a complete wholeness of both duality non-duality the infinite nothingness the the nothing mattersness the the it all matters it it's it's a holy matter i mean all of it all of it and the beauty the beauty is that this this child likeness this discovery of finding this third this third authentic whole unconditioned self of ourself we find that and we start living it and everything, everything becomes understood. Everything becomes beautiful in its own way and, and known, we know the reasons, we know the reasons. And then we just live from this joyful light and this is, this is the only way I think, I think, you can't change anything collectively. That's force, that's control, that's a pushing and shoving, that's an anger, that's not the energy that the child is. And the child is liberated, joyful freedom. So that's my little gift for today. And Jeff said, are you going to do another one of those great little videos? And I said, Jeff, okay, for you, I'll try to do one today. And so here you go. And this is for everybody. And I hope you find little gems and little treasures in, in what I'm trying to share here. All right? Okay. Have a beautiful day. I love you all. Bye.